of Iran and Arab Awakening. We have three panelists, two from Iran and one from Turkey. We start with Mr. Saleh Yasun from Sabanchi University and then Sika Sadudin from Tehran University and Mr. Sohrab Sadudin also from Tehran University. But let me begin by saying a few words about the Iranian view of the Arab Awakening. Of course, we have this term of Arab Awakening in parallel with Arab Spring. We also have the term Islamic Awakening. But what matters most is that Iran, like other countries of the region, was surprised of the Arab Spring development at the beginning, but in the course of the development, it realized its own strategy in Iraq, in Syria, and Egypt. In Egypt, Iran wanted to develop a very good relations with the Egyptian government, no matter what kind of government it was, ideological or geopolitical. In Syria, you see that Iran's strategy has been consistent, and in Iraq, it followed a kind of following uh, Iraq's territorial integrity. The important thing is that Iran wanted to uh, somehow preserve its geopolitical and ideological values like other actors of the Arab Spring uh, development. But one last thing, and that is that uh, in dealing with the Arab uh, issues, I think Iran has its own constraint, and it, is, and it is that to not putting the issue in a kind of Iranian and Arab issues, or Persian, or Arab issues, or Shiite, or Sunni issues, because that will weaken Iran's position anyway. Therefore, what follows of Iran's policies somehow to somehow preserve the unity in the uh, regional issues, and that's why Iran is following its own regional strategy, which is based on developing regional cooperation. Here, but let's uh, go and get other views of the Iranian uh, involvement with the Arab Spring development. We start with Mr. Saleh Yassin. Uh, his title is Scenarios for Increased Role of Iran in the Middle East. I think you can present your uh, remarks in 10 or 15 minutes. 10 minutes will be minutes. sufficient, yes. Thank you, Chair. Uh, hello and welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is Salih Yasun, and I'm a PhD student here in Turkey, Sabancı University. And the title of my work is Scenarios for Increased Role of Iran in the Middle East. So I would like to make a brief introduction about the situation in the region. Uh, the region is what we define as Middle East. There is a, currently a great turmoil in the region, uh, which is accompanied, accompanied by uh, American withdrawal from Afghanistan the uh, current civil war in Syria and the uh, status of Iraq and uh, Iran in, in this all turmoil remains uh, as a stable country. There are hopes that Iran can become arbiter of disputes and assist the United States in regional stability. However, the lack of cooperation among the both parties uh, has made this proposition uh, somewhat unlikely. Yet, there are hopes that uh, nuclear talks, the steps that are taken for nuclear talks, can lead to a long-term cooperation in the region, which can uh, change the dynamics of the region. The goals of my study are uh, examining the uh, changing dynamics of a more influential Iran in Afghanistan, Iraq and Syria, and uh, consider uh, whether these dynamics are beneficial uh, for the American interests, and in the end, I will make a policy recommendation for the United States. First, uh, I would like to start up by Afghanistan. Uh, the, in Afghanistan, the power is greatly divided uh, among the president, the Taliban, and local powers, such that uh, the president's power is effectively limited outside of Kabul. Uh, and the Taliban and regional forces are currently free to exercise the influence in their own domains, in their own communities. Clashes along ethnic ideological fractures continue to test countries' cohesiveness. And one important fact that I would like to note is that the clashes are usually among Pashtuns and non-Pashtuns, uh, such that 
the, uh, the majority of clashes in the Middle East, the, the sectarian lines, the ones in sectarian lines, are, in, are among Sunnis and Shias, but Afghanistan presents as a specific case such that the clashes are among Pashtuns and non-Pashtuns. And I define the two potential scenarios for Afghanistan. One is a continuous fight between the central government, the Taliban, and regional powers, which would lead to uh, instability. And the other one is a power-sharing agreement among the Taliban, regional powers, and the government, which will lead to stability. First option is a continuing fight. And uh, this would have some implications for the society, such that the instability of Afghan civil war has already led to record high opium growth. And uh, as the civil war continues, growth of opium will increase as inspections of it will dwindle due to security issues. And in that scenario, Iran remains the transit route to West. It has devoted millions of even billions of dollars to combat the pro problem of opium growth and it, it caused hundreds of lives among Iran's security and thousands of lives among Iran's yacht. So this opium issue would create significant problems for Iran. In addition, Iran will suffer from intake of refugees, spread of jihadist elements and deteriorating, secu deteriorating security of Shia community in Afghanistan. Therefore, I argue that all these factors would force Iran to ramp up its involvement against the Taliban, yet not hinder any dialogue attempts between the Taliban, uh, regional government and security forces because uh, such an issue would also create instability. Another option is a power sharing agreement. Uh, in that case, the central government would remain weak and the Taliban and regional forces would be uh, free to exercise power in their own domain. And I argue that uh, the official presence of a Taliban, official presence of a, a pragmatic Taliban in a stable Afghanistan is, in, is uh, a better option for Iran than having uh, insecure borders uh, and an unstable neighbor. So I argue that uh, Iranian interests would be better enhanced by having a stable Afghanistan and a certain presence of Taliban in the uh, power-sharing government. Therefore, I argue that Iran will support a power-sharing uh, deal. So, uh, my conclusion on Afghanistan is that Iran and the United States share co common interests, such as uh, preventing a full-scale war and the return of the Taliban, halting the flow of drugs, protecting Shia minority, and providing stability in the region. Therefore, uh, I argue that a more influential Iran can benefit the American interests in Afghanistan. My second case is Iraq. And as we know that in a democratic Iraq, Shias are the natural winners, as long as the electorate is divided among sectarian lines. However, there is a division among Shia communities in Iraq and Shia communities in Iran, such that Shia communities in Iraq consider themselves Iraqi first, Iranian second, and they are highly nationalistic, and most of their tribes fought against Iran in the Iran-Iraqi war. Therefore, uh, there are risks in Iran's involvement in Iraqi affairs, such that if it, puts, if it pushes too much, it risks itself for portraying as a meddling external power, and potential costs of uh, such an event is extremely high, as Iraq, is a, is, Iraq remains still as an instable country. Therefore, I argue that a more influential Iran's approach towards a united Iraq will still remain cautious without getting too much involved in Iraqi internal affairs because it has, it, it can gain from a democratic Iraq, but by pushing too much, it can lose too much. Yet another potential scenario exists for Iraq, which is breakup of it into three states, the Kurds, the Shias, and the Sunnis. And uh, such an option would create security vacuum and a greater opportunity for hostile anti-Iranian elements to gain foothold. And this also could lead to a greater turmoil of Iran, especially because it has a substantial Kurdish minority who are Sunnis. So briefly, I would like to uh, summarize Iranian Kurds. Uh, they remain very underdeveloped, very low literacy rates. Uh, as the education in Kurdish language is not possible currently in Iran. Uh, they, re receive, they face really high employment and poverty problems, and formation of uh, such problems 
and the uh, inspirations coming from abroad uh, led to formation of rebel groups such as PJAC. Uh, however, these re rebel groups uh, have not been as strong as local uh, Kurdish groups of Turkey and Iraq uh, because of uh, several factors. Uh, one of them is that the majority of Iranian Kurds are rural um, and they belong to Ashirets, uh, which are basically tribes, and the leadership uh, of the uh, PJAC are mainly urban left-oriented, whereas uh, the majority of Iranian Kurds are conservative. Also, there is a great division among Iranian Kurds, uh, Kurdish leadership, and also, Iran, as Iran remains a relative stable country, the Kurdish rebel organizations such as YPG in Syria and AKK in Iraq have uh, put their forces in, uh, in Iraq and Turkey where they have had a high likelihood of maintaining independence. Uh, therefore, all these factors combined uh, has provided Iran the playing field to uh, follow a cautious and pragmatic approach towards KRG such that they supported uh, the Kurdish regional government in their fights against the uh, Islamic State and recently uh, we saw the General of Quds Force uh, participating in drills of the uh, rebel forces, of uh, Kurdish rebel forces. So, uh, however, uh, Iran faces dilemma towards its Kurdish problem. On the one hand, it can increase the cooperation with the Kurdish regional government while improving the uh, living standards of the Kurdish population. Overall, we know that ethnic groups with less access to power are more likely to rebel, so this will take away the potential for rebellion. And in addition, uh, the land distribution of Kurdish region is egalitarian, egalitarian uh, due to Shah's land reform. Therefore, this distributed uh, more equal, this led to a creation of a more equal society, so that uh, potential incentives for the region would uh, benefit the society in equal terms, which would take away the possibility of horizontal inequality. And as we know from the case of India, uh, horizontal equality uh, has the potential to uh, lead, 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 lead to uh, instability and civil wars. However, there is another option for uh, Iranian Kurds, which is limiting cooperation with KRG and making no significant improvements over Kurds. And as we and we know that there is a very favorable field for the growth of nationalism among Iranian Kurds, and such that uh, in Iran, uh, as it remains a relatively egalitarian society, there is no class cleavages. And there's a corporate village pattern, and as Özbun argues, this pattern uh, is very favorable for the growth of nationalism. Also, we know from the case of Singapore that greater middle class could lead to a greater demands of autonomy, especially among in the in the place of culture. So, conclusion. My conclusion over Iraq is that uh, Iran would support a unitary Iraqi state. However, in the case of a breakup, the position of Iran seems ambiguous. And I would like to briefly explain in Syria as it's an ongoing case. Uh, ethnic, I argue that the ethnic division of uh, Syria severely limits policy options of Iran. Uh, and Iran has practical reasons for supporting Assad, such, that, such as that, uh, Assad is its uh, corridor to uh, reaching out with uh, Hezbollah and Hamas. Also, Iran faces uh, fears of encirclement uh, if it loses Syria to a Sunni government, which is allied with the United States and other uh, Sunni nations in the region. Therefore, I argue that nuclear deal is unlikely to cut across the dynamics of Iran and Sunni Arab nations, and taking away sanctions could increase the public's welfare, which would lessen the pressure for which will lessen the public's pressure for providing monetary support to Syria. Therefore, I argue that retaining current state of configuration through an Alevite uh, dominated uh, framework is in the self interest of Syria. My conclusion is that a more influential Iran would uh, benefit American interests in Afghanistan, uh, serve against American interests in Syria. However, uh, in Iraq, the situation seems ambiguous. So my policy recommendations for the United States are not increasing U.S. military involvement or sanctions to keep Iranian power. This proposition was put forward by former CIA head Petrius recently, 
who argue that uh, to uh, curb increase of Syrian power, the United States needs to deploy more troops to Iran and threaten it with more sanctions. However, I believe that such an option would uh, threaten Iran, which could lead it to a follow-up proxy warfare. And as we know from the Afghanistan case, even though Taliban remains as an uh, enemy of Iran, uh, Iran provided uh, indirect support to Taliban in order to curb American power in Afghanistan to a certain extent. So, and I also argue that the United States, before making co significant commitments in nuclear talks, needs to prioritize its interest region as to how much stability it, it can have in Afghanistan while, uh, you know, how much stability it can have in Afghanistan while giving up some instability in Syria and on the Kurdish issue, and it will be much better for, an for engaging with a, a more influential Iran in the region if the United States can address stability issues in Syria and Iraq. And this is my work cited. I have some extra slides, but I think I ran out of time. Uh, I think I'm okay. Maybe after everything is finished. Thank well, you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Sabanchi. I think uh, you, uh, sorry, guys. Uh, I think you, uh, you made your comments very carefully in four uh, issues in, in Afghanistan, Iraq, the Kurdish issue, and Iran, nuclear issue and uh, its relations with the regional issues. We come back to your comment in the Q&A, but uh, before I go to the second panelist, I would like to mention one thing, and that is the name of Iran. Uh, we call it Iran. Iran is an uh, American uh, term. And the name of Iran, I'm sure you know that, is the, the territorial name of the country which the father of the Shah of Iran, Reza Khan, put on the country. Persian is Iranian cultural identity. So we don't call it Persian, we call it Iran as the territorial name of this entity we are, we are seeing today. But we would like more to be called Iran, not Iran. But let's go to the second panelist, uh, who is from Iran, uh, Mrs. Uh, Sika Sadudin from Tehran University. Uh, the title of her uh, presentation is The Improvement of the Relations Between Saudi Arabia and Iran and its Impact on Resolving Regional Crisis. Uh, please, you can take 10 to 15 minutes. First of all, thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. And my article entitled The Improvement of, of the Relations Between Saudi Arabia and Iran and its Impact on Resolving Regional Crisis. My paper consists of uh, two parts historical, uh, historical review and relations under President Rouhani. In fact, I want to use the historical review in order to analyze the current relations between the two countries. In general, after Iran's revolution, four factors caused tension in their relations. One, contrasting political systems of the two countries. Two, defending of the different Sunni and Shia factions in the region. Three, competition for gaining regional superpower. And finally, Iran's efforts to export its revolution. In this regard, I divided the historical review into four parts. One, the decade of 1980, decade of open conflict. In this decade, uh, the Islamic revolution called monarchy as an un-Islamic form of government and on the other hand, Saudi Arabia was the main financial backers of Iraq during Iran-Iraq war. And the peak of adversarial relations in this era was the Hajj incident in 1987. Two, the decade of 1990, efforts to rebuild the relations. There were three reasons from Iran's side to improve its relation with Saudi Arabia during this era. One, the necessity of economic reconstructing. 
Two, the Iraqi invasion of Kuwait, and third, the collapse of the Soviet Union. In fact, in this decade, the normalization of relations with neighboring Persian Gulf states was on the top of Iran's foreign policy. And in this regard, in, two, in, uh, in 2001, a joint security pact between uh, the two countries signed. In fact, the King Abdullah's reforms and President Khalil Khatami's policy of dialogue of civilization made the relations between the two countries even more and more, more friendly. Three, the, the, the relations between the two countries uh, in, in the year between 2003 and 2011. The decade I called it the empowerment of Iran's regional position. It had three reasons. The U.S. invasion of Iraq in 2003, <coughs> that, uh, that the result was a Shi government close to Iran took power. Hamas victory in parliamentary elections in 2004, and third, rattling Hezbollah against Israel in 33 days of war in 2006. In general, events, all, almost all events after 2003 shifted the balance of power in the relations between the two countries in favor of Iran. Uh, one very important uh, point uh, should be mentioned in this regard, and this, uh, this, uh, this is the Iran's strategy under uh, President Ahmadinejad's presidency, which was called Iran's Arab Street Strategy, which was an aggressive non-sectarian foreign policy aiming to create unique, uh, unity among Muslims, which was a very attractive strategy for Arab public opinion. And uh, the, the four, uh, number four was uh, to, uh, by the beginning of the Arab Spring, Spring in 2011. I called it Iran's proactive foreign policy. The, uh, the, in fact, the Arab revolutions uh, could be an opportunity <coughs> for Iran to establish alliances with countries whose former dictators had no tendency to have relations with it. In addition, Tehran could undermine the legitimacy of Arab rulers by highlighting their dependence on, dependence on the U.S. Saudi Arabia, uh, after beginning this, uh, the Arab Spring, had a, a conservative approach and a responsive foreign policy, in my opinion. And, in, uh, and Iran had a proactive foreign policy defending its regional ally, Syria, and of course, trying to obtain new regional allies. But using this historical review, we will discuss the reasons from both sides to improve their relations in their new era. First, as Goss defined it precisely, rapprochement in Iran and Saudi Arabia relations means an agreement to lower temperature or their mutual condemnations and to act with self-restraint in order to limit the regional spillover consequences of the Syrian and Iraq domestic conflicts. President Rouhani took power, called his state the state of national, uh, rationality and moderation, rapprochement with the international community, and he mentioned it clearly that his priority in the region is Saudi Arabia calling Saudi Arabia a friend and a brother. In fact, in this new era, Iran and Saudi Arabia realized that the result of intensification of sectarian and geostrategic regional rivalries was instability and growth of extremist trends in the backyard. Saudi Arabia's reasons for improving relations with Iran are three. One, Failure of the coalition politics of Saudi Arabia in the Arab world against Iran. Two, failure of the destruction policy and improving of Iran's relations with the West under the presidency of President Rouhani. And three, shifting priority. 
shifting priorities, priorities of U.S. foreign policy. In fact, Saudi Arabia did fear is that geopolitical trends in the Middle East are against them, threatening both regional stature and their domestic security. Now, Iran, Iran's reasons for improving relations with Saudi Arabia. One, the impacts of improving their relations on Iran's nuclear deal with the West. And two, the impact, the impact of improving their relations on Iran's relations with the Arab world, especially with the GCC members. In conclusion, I do firmly believe that the mutual fear of the growth of the extremist groups is the, uh, was the main driver in the willingness of both sides to improve their relations during this new era. And of course, the failure of the coalition and destruction policies against Iran impelled Saudi Arabia toward a policy of cooperation that will be probably welcomed by Iran. And finally, the improvement of their relations will have a positive effect on ending the internal conflicts in Syria and Iraq. And I firmly believe that without Iran and Saudi Arabia cooperation, the crisis in Syria, Iraq, and in the whole region will be prolonged. Well, thank you very much. I'm sure that in the Q&A, we will have more comments and exchanges on this. Iranian-Saudi relations, which is very much, of course, important for the regional issues and trans-regional relations. Anyway. But let's go to another perspective. <laughs> uh, uh, again, from Iran, Mr. Sorab Sadduddin is from Tehran University. He would like to talk about uh, this title, Two Empires in One Territory. Uh, I can't guess what is the subject of uh, your presentation, but let's go deep inside and see what you would like to say. Uh, you also have 10-15 minutes to present your uh, thoughts. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and also my professor, Dr. Barzaga. Uh, the name of, uh, the title of my research is uh, you see is two emperors in the street with evaluation of possibility of forming long-term cooperation between Iran and Turkey. I choose this topic because I firmly believe that uh, the only solution to solving the problems in the region is uh, shaping the constructive and long-term cooperation between Iran and Turkey as two regional powers. Uh, in the first part of my speech, I want to review the historical background of Iran-Turkey relation. Uh, it's important in my estimation because it shows us that this competition between Iran, Iran and Turkey is uh, not a new phenomenon, and it is rooted in history. Anyway, the first competition between Iran and Turkey was started in uh, Iranian narrative, uh, legendary narrative of Shahnameh by Ferdowsi. In his book, Ferdowsi, depicted Iran-Turkish confrontation in the context of the story of Iran and Turaf. And uh, following this, uh, the earliest re real uh, com confrontation between Iran and Turkey had happened, uh, had happened during the 6th and 7th era uh, between uh, Sasani and Guk Turks. And then, during the Safavi era, the nature, of, uh, the nature of confrontation between Iran and Turkey had changed from the strategic one to ideological one. Also, during, this <coughs> eight, uh, during the 18th century, uh, some fact, one important factor forced two countries to uh, ignore their differences and cooperate with each other. That factor, that factor was combating against common enemy was Britain and also Russia and their imper imperial policies. Uh, following this, the uh, at the 20th century, two important internal factors have, have complicated Iran and Turkey relations. These two factors were pan turkish movement in Turkey and also the victory of Iranian Islamic revolution in Iran. Nowadays, 
there is no doubt. I think that uh, Turkey and Iran are strategic com are, strat uh, are strategic competitor. But why? Or it should we say that what are the reasons behind in this competition? To answer this question, uh, I should say that Turkey and Iran are representing two different type of governance, two different interpretation of Islam, and two different kind of kind of economy. Also, the, both countries have uh, emperor history and have magnificent uh, magnificent history, and they they are many they have many ambitions to revive this history. Nowadays, and after Rouhani election, we are watching signs of change in Turkish-Iranian relations. On Iran's side, there are three internal and <laughs> external factors have led to Iran's detent with neighbors. These factors uh, are internal stable political and social environment in Iran, especially after the election, progress in nuclear talks and also general agreements, and Iran's effort to get, up, get out of the isolation. But on Turkey's side, on Turkey's side, we can uh, indicate to internal uh, unrest in Turkey and due to uh, economic corruption and uh, also the problem of Kurdish people. Turkey's faith policies in relation to Egypt and Syria. Faith policies have led to uh, have uh, damaged Turkey's relation with Saudi Arabia and Turkey's need to Turkey's need to rebuild its regional position. These three factors have led to policy of zero tension with neighbors in the context of uh, the double uh, uh, doctrine of uh, uh, the strategy. But uh, the general argument between Iran and Turkey uh, brings some kind of fears and hopes for, Tur for Turkey. Uh, on a positive side, these uh, agreements by removing sanctions against Iran provide good opportunity for Turkish uh, economy. And on a negative side, uh, empowerment of uh, Ir Iran's regional position as a result of this agreement <coughs> should challenge, may, maybe challenge Turkey's quest for regional leadership. But beyond this competition, there are areas of cooperation between Iran and Turkey. Economic cooperation, security cooperation, as you see, and political cooperation. Let me explain more political cooperation. Uh, political cooperation. I mean that Turkey and Iran are two members of the Rising Powers Club, and they should and they have common interest in uh, challenging uh, current international current unfair international system. I mean, current international system is uh, is uh, uh, represents the structure of power after World War Two, and uh, it's not. Uh, isn't representing the uh, today's structure of power. As a conclusion, uh, uh, I'm going to say that uh, the cooperation between Iran and Turkey, the shaping of cooperation, constructive and long-term cooperation between Iran and Turkey, is not a dream. It is a reachable goal uh, that would be reached uh, in following four steps. One, Putting away the historical pessimism, Turkey and Iran should uh, end up repeat, repeating themselves and should uh, put in away the historical pessimism. Two, achieving the common understanding of the regional threats. Three, answering the dilemma of efficiency influence. Uh, let me explain more. I mean that uh, Turkey and Iran are searching for more and more and more influence. But more influence for what? Uh, or why? Uh, I mean that what Turkey and Iran is really are really need is not more influence. It is it is more efficient regional mechanisms. <coughs> Let me explain uh, more. Uh, nowadays, regional challenger are using the uh, are using the vacuum that drive from Iran and Turkey competition and lack of cooperation. If Iran and Turkey try to uh, empower the regional mechanisms, they can fill this gap. And also, they can restrict the regional challenger. And uh, four, spinning over the economic cooperation into the security one. I think that Turkey and Iran can boost the economic cooperation, and also, you know, that uh, maybe it's, uh, it, it should be a spin over to the security one. Thank you. Now we have uh, some time, almost uh, forty minutes to. Uh, share our views, but before we go to Q and A, 
uh, section, uh, let me say one word about Iran and Turkey, the subject of the last presentation. I think myself that Iran and Turkey have 100 reasons to cooperate, a few not. They might have some differences, but geography matters a lot to attach these two countries. And because of the fact that they have two powerful nation states that are against extremism, uh, in favor of interdependency of the economy <laughs> and a lot of economic exchanges, before, despite of the differences they have, for instance, in Syria, tension of political uh, differences, still we see that economic exchanges are rising because they have some constant in, in two sides relations. Therefore, we see Iran's Turkey relations in a pace of rising, and this will improve in the future. I have some comments about the other presentations, but let's get some views, and then we exchange our views. I think we have touched good, uh, good things. Iran-Saudi relations, Iran-Turkey relations, and Iran increased uh, role by this Turkish gentleman. I think it's good to uh, see some Turkish view of Iranian uh, role in the regional context. But still, I have some comments. But let's get some uh, some question and views. You have now uh, the time. Yes, on that. Hello. Uh, I have some questions. First, uh, I have missed some Can you uh, speak louder, please? Okay. Oh, okay. This is good. Yeah. Thank you very much. <coughs> Would you like to stand up so that the others see you? Yeah, that's good. Uh, we can start now. Yeah. Thank you. Um, maybe I'm not informed enough, but uh, I do not believe such verbal attacks against Iran, and I firmly believe that during this era under the presidency of President Rouhani, both, uh, both sides have justi justified well, and uh, they are, I think that uh, they are determined to cooperate with, uh, with each other to end the domestic crisis in Syria and Iraq. Okay, you. Uh, I'd like to say that, uh, in my estimation, I'm sure that all of you are in uh, In my estimation, my country, Iran, has its uh, um, has its uh, uh, unique analysis about the Syrian crisis. I mean, uh, we, we uh, or our governments believe that 
The only solution for Syrian crisis is the discourse, is shaping discourse between Syrian uh, protests and Syrian governments. But uh, I mean, unfortunately, Turkey's government uh, don't. Uh, Turkey's co uh, government sometimes ignore the long-term effects uh, uh, or line, the long-term consequences of their policies. I mean that Turkey uh, nowadays Turkey supports. Uh, protests, uh, but uh, Turkey's government uh, couldn't divide the protests. I mean that they uh, support uh, they support uh, some Salafist groups and Daesh drive from the, the support. And uh, we have we have uh, our uh, our uh, solution. The, the solution is uh, uh, shaping discourse between Turkey between Syrian government. And, and Syrian protesters and uh, Turkish governments. I mean, uh, uh, I mean, uh, try to uh, empower Assad's protest and don't uh, and ignore the long-term consequences of uh, these uh, supports. Use microphone, please. Okay, uh, I think I, you are loud enough. I think the first month of the uprising, there was a statement from Anatol Mashu, who was foreign minister at the day. There were takes a foreign intervention in the Bangladesh discourse. And he spoke at that time, I think, uh, a foreign intervention in Syria uh, can create a uh, massive cause uh, that will uh, end in a sectarian war. <laughs> I go because that I think some of Turkey's foreign policy makers are also aware of and second, uh, you know, uh, Uran while Iranian uh, solution is on this Ukraine is supporting some Turkish like Saudi, but can we ignore the uh, Iranian regime, Iranian power uh, support groups like uh, mostly Iraq? Who, who is uh, uh, And uh, can we know that, uh, that many uh, Iranian volunteers, uh, which are fighting on the other front and uh, getting killed, uh, getting assassinated, wanted to fight the position, uh, is Iran only one place for their support? Okay, thank you. It's a very interesting exchanges between two Iranian and Turkish uh, you know, students or scholars. If you have any, uh, if you have any comments on that, you can you can raise. But you don't need to convince each other anyway because. Uh, no, that's that was good. I mean, that's that's very interesting because the audience can hear what you are. Yeah, absolutely. Would you like to uh, to comment on that? No. Okay. Uh, yeah. Over there. Can you stand up and, sir, introduce yourself? I know you, but uh, perhaps. My name is Ali, and my question is for Mehdi. Um, my question was about possible collaboration between Iran and. 
And okay, this is a good idea, but on the other hand, if I were a realist, I can write an objection to this. For example, look at other examples all around the world, German, France, and uh, in Asia and other parts of the world. Such kind of corporations uh, were established with the help of a superpower. In the case of Germany and France, after the Second World War, uh, US came to this region and it created a suitable country for, uh, condition for this kind of cooperation. Now, when we look at the case of uh, Turkey and Iran, both of them are regional power or middle power, not superpower. But their position against superpowers all around the world are completely different. Turkey looks uh, at the United States differently, Iran looks at the United States differently. And when we look at the history, uh, before uh, 1980s, for example, both countries had a cooperative relation. Why? Because both of them were very close to the United States. That's superpower. But in this case, in the current case, uh, cooperation seems quite impossible because no superpower uh, um, is not able to create a suitable condition for such kind of cooperation. And both Iran and Turkey perceive the world differently, especially superpowers. And structural, I think, uh, such kind of cooperation seems impossible if I were aware. But if I we are liberal or uh, optimist about workforces, okay, we can do something to create a cooperation. Mm -hmm. But the reality of uh, the, 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 how the politics does work, is a bit it seems quite impossible. This is, this is my comment. And it's not uh, exactly a question, but what, what do you think about this possibility when you consider about this uh, aspect of, of, mm -hmm. of problems? Would you like to say something? Yeah. Uh, he remembers uh, Nixon two pillars strategy during Muhammad uh, Bashar uh, era in Iran. I mean that uh, nowadays the superpowers. I really agree with you that without supporting of uh, without superpowers supporting any kind of cooperation between Iran and Turkey, and uh, I I'm, I'm not saying that it's impossible, but it's very difficult. Uh, I mean that Iran and Turkey, as two regional power, can shape regional order, stable regional order, order, and superpowers. Now that shaping this regional order, order is in favor of their interests. I know that uh, you know, uh, according to status attribution theory, uh, only Iran and Turkey has the position or has the status of regional powers in the region, and Turkey can mediate between Iran and the Arab country, and uh, Iran also could. Um, uh, helping Turkey could help Turkey in um, uh, stabilizing the region. You know, in a Bonn conference in Germany, uh, Turkey and Iran uh, have engaged in uh, the discourse about uh, stabilization, uh, 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 discourse about the stabilized Afghanistan. I I I, I believe that this kind of cooperation could be uh, could be reached. But I really agree with you that without the uh, superpower supporting, it's very difficult. But nowadays, I think that uh, this kind of cooperation is in favor of superpowers' interests. Okay, let, let me add a small point. Can I? Yes, you can, okay, but uh, short, please. Yeah, two very short one. Uh, let us a very clear example. Uh, the U Turkey left the U.S. to establish an uh, anti-missile system in Malaysia. Yeah. Okay, this small, very small intervention by a superpower changed all picture. Before that, Turkey and Iran had good relations, but with this intervention, all pictures start to change. Okay, that, that, that's okay. why I'm emphasizing the role of superpower and their position okay. in such kind of cooperation. Okay, any other question? Yes. Please. <laughs> I can, I can, you can come here. That would be a trouble for you to search. I can give you the sources 
after the conference. Um, the main, my reliance was on Western media. Uh, so, and the reports there indicated that uh, the Iran Iranian support for Taliban was existing, but it was limited. And its only aim was to curb American power in the region after Iran was considered among the axis of evil uh, by the by President Bush. <coughs> Would you like to follow up? I agree with you, and uh, in my future research, I would like to incorporate more Iranian elements in my research. <clears throat> okay, uh, this case of the Taliban and Iranian relations with the Taliban is a very tricky uh, understanding of Iran's role. What you should know is that the Taliban is anti-Iranian, anti-Persian, anti-Shia. Therefore. Iran might, to some extent, for the sake of the stability in Afghanistan, help the U.S. or cooperate in, in Afghanistan for settling a government in, in, in Afghanistan, with including of the Taliban. But I will assure you that Iran will never support the Taliban, because ideologically and geopolitically, the Taliban is in nature anti-Iranian, and the Iranian would never support that. Of course, they might include the Taliban and contain Taliban in the power sharing of Afghanistan because of the reality. The British, the American, they are negotiating because the Taliban cannot be removed from Afghanistan politics. It's a, it's a reality over there. It's part of the population and philosophy of Afghanistan. But this support of the Taliban is something that I agree with this lady, and you should uh, be careful of that uh, issue. Uh, let's get uh, some other views. Uh, still, we have some time. Yes. Can you stand up, please? Yeah. The point is, okay, the point, uh, the sources of the presentations, he will come back again. So let's, uh, let's get some other views. Yes, please. Can you introduce yourself and then... Yeah, the Iranian views. Uh, I remind you that this is an exchange between Iranian and Turkish society. I think this is a great opportunity we can exchange in a very healthy way, especially from, from Iran and of course from uh, the gentleman from Turkey, also from you. So we, we are trying to understand better on, on historical fact and contextual uh, situation. Yeah, please. So I encourage our friends to talk more. I will have some comments also. I think that uh, in comparison to uh, the factor of external powers uh, uh, 
I think that the regional uh, the religious issue is not very important in the relation between Iran and Turkey. You know, because Turkey is has a, uh, its kind of uh, um, governance and uh, uh, Iran uh, and Iran and Turkey relation uh, in this relation, I think the religious issue is uh, is not very important. I can add on that. Uh, uh, I think the third party in Iran-Turkey relations even put it in a historical context or even power sharing context would not, would not suit the two sides relations, would not define the two sides relations. I think both are rising regional power. They have powerful state uh, and nation. They uh, they have a great deal of bringing stability in the region. They are against uh, uh, foreign fighters and extremism in the region, and they are in favor of uh, keeping the political borders in the region. These are a lot of commonalities. And I think that rising power, independent power, would like to express themselves in their own way. Perhaps it was in the time of one decade ago, America could influence Iran's Turkey relations. But today it's not according to the realities of the region's politics. Because both have claim, both have role. And they are playing their own state's interest with the regional characterizations, characteristic. Therefore, the foreign element cannot even affect Iran-Saudi Arabia relations because we see that Saudi Arabia is somehow closer to the United States because of dependency to the United States militarily and other things. But Saudis these days are doing their own way of politics in, in the region. So even a third party external power cannot influence Iran-Saudi Arabia relations right now we are talking. Therefore, I would say that regional powers in, in the Middle East need to have their own way of doing politics. Despite all differences they have between Iran and Turkey, but they need to express themselves in their own independent way. I finish by saying that the, the founder of this country, Ataturk, uh, he uh, expressed that Turkish interest is to be close to the West. He didn't mean that Turkey to be westernized. The founder of the Islamic uh, Republic of Iran, Ayatollah Khomeini, mentioned and expressed that Iran's interest to stay away from the West, but he didn't mean that Iran to be anti-Western. But he wanted to establish a new kind of strategy, which is based on new Iran's source of power, independent Iran trying to express itself. Therefore, if we go in history deep and philosophy, we see that the differences are there. But there's still two pioneering nation states that would like to express in this, not only in the region, I would say in the global context. Iran and Turkey have the potential to be a global actors. Why not? They have history, they have size, they have potential, they have poten very great economic potentials. They could be, you know, even uh, in the highest quest of middle-sized global power. Therefore, they are trying to balance their their, their politics in the region with, with the hand to be global actors. Therefore, I would say that uh, external power no longer can affect the two sides relations because the two sides are engaged with geography, economic interdependency, and of course, uh, at the top of it, playing their own politics, which is respectable. Uh, let's uh, let's uh, get uh, some other views. Uh, we still have uh, 20 minutes. Would you like to uh, stand up and introduce yourself? Thank you. Uh, I wanted to ask, uh, in your presentation, there was uh, the side of Turkey and the side of Iran, and uh, there are positions that, uh, like, Turkey has, uh, has to define to its role in the region as a power. So, don't you think that Iran has the same task to do so? Also, Iran has uh, regional ambitions and uh, like Turkey, like Turkey. But uh, I, I said that 
they should uh, moderate the regional uh, ambitions to uh, get closer with each other and to, uh, to be able to shape the constructive cooperation. Because in the uh, current atmosphere in the Middle East, uh, uh, competition between Iran and Turkey and uh, uh, for reaching uh, reg uh, the position of regional leadership harming two countries and uh, has bad effects on the stability of the region. Yeah, yeah, you, you're right. Iran also has uh, regional uh, ambitions because Iran and Turkey, I told in my presentation that all two countries uh, are aiming to uh, revive their magnific magnificent history. Yes, but from your presentation, it appears to me like uh, Turkey, because of the, its uh, policy, About uh, Turkey and Iran cooperation. Uh, yes, and the uh, and the policy concerning Iran, especially. Uh, you know, Iran and Turkey, both countries, are concerned about uh, the other's regional position. You know, I, I told that after general agreement, na nowadays Iran is one of the members of uh, nuclear uh, responsible states, yeah. and uh, Turkey is worried about this because. Uh, this empower Iran's regional position as a regional power. But in, at the other side, Turkey uh, has, its own, uh, uh, has its own position. Turkey is a member of NATO and also uh, uh, has also the, the close, uh, um, Turkey has close relation with the West. Uh, both countries are concerned about empowering uh, the, each, uh, each other's regional, uh, the other's regional position, but I, I, uh, uh, in my estimation, I believe that they should uh, ignore, because I think uh, they, they should ignore this short-term uh, interest uh, in favor of long-term interest, that is uh, stabilizing the region, uh, and so on. Yes, but during the nuclear discussion, Turkey's government uh, 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 told that uh, sanction is not is not a way. They, they are concerned about Iranian nuclear program, but they think that uh, the solution for solving this problem is only political discourse. Uh, yeah. Yes, yes, please, please. Yeah, uh, you said that uh, the General, I think this is a very uh, good question. You tell us your views of Mr. Rouhani's uh, administration in the context of Iran. Yeah, you can start with that. I think uh, uh, after Ahmadinejad era, Iran is trying to understand the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the real nature of uh, policy in the Middle East. And Iran is tr and uh, Iran is trying to get out of the isolation, isolation that driving from the sanctions and uh, Rouhani foreign policy and also Zaif uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs are trying to uh, are trying to repeat the policy of uh, Khatami's government with uh, Arab countries, with Turkey, because Iran uh, understand that uh, as a regional power, you know, I, I, I uh, told about the status attribution theory. In that theory, um, we uh, read that the regional power 
should uh, gain the in-group status. In-group status means that the uh, um, the original actors should uh, should uh, now you should should inter uh, should uh, believe you as original power. Iran uh, at the first in, in the first step, Iran should gain the uh, original actors' recognition. I mean that uh, Iran should uh, detent with uh, his, its neighbors, uh, also uh, Turkey. Turkey, I think, is uh, are the most uh, is the most neighbor of Iran, and uh, in this way, Iran can achieve uh, the, uh, the in group in group uh, recognition. I mean, regional powers, regional actors, uh, uh, recognition. Uh, uh, Verify Iran's regional power, you know? Do you think yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, just just uh, concrete. Do you think that uh, this process, uh, the process in the very Do you have other questions? Uh, uh, I think it's in the eye. Please repeat. I remind you at this time we are not going to engage with theoretical framework. We don't have the time. Uh, we need to stop at some point so that we get some other views. Yes, that's it. Thanks for your all of good contribution. Uh, my name is Mehmet. I'm a student in here in international relations. I, my question I will go to the Sami uh, Yasun. And you, I saw some sentences from your presentation that was uh, Iran and United States want to protect uh, Shia the majority, I think. Minority in Afghanistan? Yes. Yes. Uh, why do the United States and Iran want to protect that majority? That's the first question. Uh, may I finish? Question finish? No, the second minute. question, all yeah. of you. Yeah. Yeah. The, between uh, the separation to uh, between uh, the sect of Islam, is it uh, good for the Muslim or uh, not? I mean, our Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he was uh, not a Sunni or Shi'i. I think the problem uh, is. So is that a comment or question? Is that a comment or question? Actually, uh, I want your opinion. I want to uh, how you think about that. Uh, Iran uh, considers itself. Sorry, uh, Iran. Yes, <laughs> I'm sorry. I would like to uh, apologize for the pronunciation, but I'm getting there. Iran uh, considers itself as uh, guardian of Shias, and uh, it would like to protect the Shia community all around the world, and. Uh, but in terms of America, I don't see any uh, real politic behind its protection of Shia minority. But uh, I think that the last thing that America needs right now is it, draw, it withdraws its troops from Afghanistan. It is uh, a kind of genocide against minority there, which would uh, change public opinion towards Afghanistan and the views uh, towards current leadership. So I think that uh, overall, um, if we consider American exceptionalism and their support for human rights and norms, uh, they both share an interest in protecting Shia minority, uh, but perhaps Iranian is interest, Iranian interest is much deeper than American one. Okay, thank you very much. Regarding your comment, I, I, I propose you, you would like to say? It? Yes. Yes, yes. I don't know his name. <coughs> That was a old question. Huh? Yes, I would like to come back. Yeah. Um, uh, in, in my, I explained. In my paper, I mentioned that I am not saying that Saudi Arabia or Iran are willing themselves to cooperate with each, with each other. I'm saying that uh, they are somehow uh, uh, they are somehow have to cooperate with uh, each other because of the because of the failure of. A destruction uh, policy from Saudi Arabia after 2003, and uh, because of the uh, to some the isolation of Iran in the region during the presidency of President Ahmadinejad. So I want to ma make it clear that uh, maybe they are not willing to cooperate with each other, but they have to cooperate with each other. Um, 
Okay, okay. Uh, any other question, comments? Uh, yes, you can. Yes, uh, that's a open no, question. No, I have no plan to make extra comments. No, that's fine. We have some time. Maybe you should feel it. Your comments tend to be continued with this discussion. Okay, you uh, draw a good picture about possible cooperation among regional powers. Uh, that's for me. Yeah, uh, you said uh, Saudi Arabia and Iran made something positive to create a cooperation. Okay, uh, recently this is true. When you look at some facts, recent facts, it seems true. But when we look at a uh, little bit back issues, for example, Turkey and Brazil and Iran tried to something uh, against uh, a superpower, United States, but this attempt at the beginning seemed that, okay, uh, something is happening, uh, we uh, can have a full <coughs> balance, but this was interrupted by the United States and great power. I, I, I mean that uh, sustainability of any cooperation uh, is, is, is very, very difficult without the support coming from superpower. Okay, we can, something, uh, we can do something good, for cooperation as a regional or middle power, but sustainability is quite important, that kind of cooperation. And sustainability uh, seems very, very difficult with, uh, with the help of superpower, or with the position, uh, without the position of superpower. So this is my comment from Leary's perspective. Okay, uh, but uh, this can continue, and we would not like to go ahead with that, but what I meant was that uh, it is correct, yes. I think that that declaration of Tehran between Iran, Brazil, and Turkey was a good lesson for all of these countries, regional powers, because they realized that how superpowers react to some good initiative, and that would have had good uh, uh, lessons, especially for Turkey, because the blame cannot be landed on, on Iran, or cooperating with Turkey or uh, Turkey or Brazil, the blame can be landed on the uh, the superpowers that they would like to monopolize the whole politics of the world, not giving any space to other powers or regional powers or actors that would like to play their own politics in their own neighborhood. <laughs> Therefore, I would put it in that direction, but that doesn't mean that we stop uh, not trying to create some space to cooperate. Because, yes, of course, at the end of the day, there are elements that would not like to share the share of power with other countries, like in the case of Iran, Turkey, in the declaration of Tehran, which, by the way, is about Iran's nuclear program. And Turkey did a well role, and it is uh, Iran's appreciate uh, kind of image of Turkey in that time, which was a very uh, great, I would say, initiative in that time. But it didn't work. But the blame cannot be landed on the two sides' cooperation anyway. I can tell you about Iran-Saudi Arabia also uh, cooperation. Both have, it is a reality, both are in rivalry. There is no doubt. The Saudis are playing their own uh, politics and Iran also. Perhaps the legitimacy of Iran's playing role in the region is much more than Saudis, because the Saudis' ideology is not attractive and they don't have a strategy. They are sophisticated in changing politics behind the scene, but at the end they do not have the trend of a strategy anyway. But Iran has a point, Turkey has a point to, to go ahead, whatever it is, and we, we know that we, there are differences. But let's see if the Saudi uh, know that they need to cooperate with Iran and Iran, think that it needs to cooperate with Saudi Arabia. It is not new. It has always been in Iran's strategy to cooperate with Saudi Arabia. But Iran has the self-confidence to work with Saudi Arabia, but the Saudis do not have. Because they think that by uh, 
cooperating with Iran, they will give Iran more role and clout in the regional context. But it is in Iran's strategy to cooperate with Saudi Arabia from a realistic point of view because it thinks that by that it will somehow uh, 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 neutralize the, the foreign role in the region. There is a strategy behind this regional approach of Iran. There is a strategy behind the Turkish approach of regional policy, I am sure. Therefore, I would say that for sustainable cooperation, the two sides need to create things, to work, and it is the duty of scholars and experts like this. I think we, we need to finish at, at some point. Uh, we are now uh, exactly at the time of uh, finishing this session, but I, I'm glad that we, we had a very good session. This was an exchange of view between Iranian expert and, uh, and Turkish expert. The uh, uh, leader of this conference is here, Dr. Rina. Thank you very much for, for providing this, this opportunity for us to come here and to share with you some of our views. Thank you very much, Saleh. For, uh, he, he, uh, he made a good presentation. Of course, I somehow disagree with some of his points, but uh, he, he has a good deal of uh, the uh, regional issues and Iran's role. Uh, thank you very much, thank you very much. Uh, if there is no comment or question, we can finish this, uh, this, this panel. Thank you very much again.